at almost every single dosage, the young men have more free ADHD for the same dose of testosterone or equal at like the very worst. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreadies.com. Today, we are going to be talking about DHT levels as you get older. Do you actually start producing more DHT? Why is it that you lose hair as you get older and not when you're younger? This is something I get asked all the time, even though I've covered, well, at least the second portion of that um, topic of conversation. So the first thing I wanna address before we get into why you lose your hair when you're older rather than when you're younger, when you have lower testosterone levels is you don't produce more DHT as you get older. So first off, I have a study here that I'm going to pull up that is going to show the effects of injected testosterone dose and age on the conversion of testosterone to estradiol and dihydrotestosterone in young and older men. So the first idea is that as you get older, it's not that you necessarily, you know, produce everyone wonders why would you have higher testosterone when you're younger but more, lose your hair when you're older when your testosterone levels are lower it must be that your body's compensating and converting more of that testosterone to dht and that's what's causing the hair loss because it's trying to make up for the fact that you're you know low androgens and it's going it to produce more dht to kind of like fill the void essentially when you actually look at the results that's not the case whatsoever when you look at the response to treatment you'll have Young and old men who are using 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 125 milligrams, 300 milligrams, or 600 milligrams of testosterone per week. So this is, you know, all dosage ranges. We have a response here in um, older men and younger men. So here in this chart, you can see the black bars represent the young men and white bars represent the older men. And you can see here for total E2 at the 25 milligram dose, E2 being estradiol, and we have total versus free, which you have to keep in mind here, which often goes completely overlooked, is the affinity to bind for SHBG of sex hormones. Estradiol has a binding affinity, DHT has a binding affinity, testosterone has a binding affinity, and the binding affinity is going to determine largely which ones exactly what you'd expect, have a higher affinity to bind to the sex hormone binding globulin, and for the however much is going to be free in the body to actually transcribe its, its effects in tissues. So estradiol has the lowest binding affinity of the sex hormones we're evaluating. Testosterone is significantly higher than estradiol, but DHT is five times higher than testosterone. DHT has the highest binding affinity for SHBG, significantly higher than testosterone, and also significantly higher than estradiol by even a greater magnitude. So total estradiol, this is with the exact same amount of testosterone. It's all controlled. There's no variance in endogenous production because we're both, they're both shut down at these dosages. When they're exogenously applying it, administering it, both the young and the old men are shut down. So all we see here is sex hormone metabolism and how things are, you know, how much aromatase expression versus how much 5-alpha reduction and how much sex hormone binding globulin is binding everything up and producing these ratios of androgens to estrogen. So total estradiol, as you see here, the young men versus the old men. The young men have, you know, pretty much the same as the old men. It is around, you know, 19 picograms per milliliter. The actual exact figures are in the study, but I'm going to go off of the bar graph, just, you know, estimate estimate so I can, you know, go through this quicker for you. 50 milligrams of testosterone per week. The younger group aromatizes less. The older group has a bit of a higher amount of aromatase expression. 125 milligrams per week. The older group is significantly higher in estradiol than the men now, or than the younger men. 300, significantly higher again. And 600, the older men are producing nearly double the amount of estrogen that the young men are. So far more aromatase activity. Now, we look at the free E2. There's a bit of a difference here compared to the total. So here, you have the younger men who have higher free E2 at the 25 milligram dose. It's about equal to 50. The older men have, you know, probably like one, almost like double, maybe like one third additional on top of the younger men in terms of uh, free E2 picograms per milliliter. And then at the 300 dose, the older men are around, 
mm, two picograms per milliliter and the younger men around 1.5. So, you know, there's a difference proportionally between the two, which I'm going to be getting to shortly. Now the total DHT, here we have the younger men are producing more DHT for 25 milligrams of test than the older men, almost double. At 50, it's about the same. At 125 milligrams per week, now you have to consider this as total DHT too, not free. The younger men are producing less DHT at the 125 milligram dose. 300 milligram dose, the older men are producing about 20 nanograms per deciliter more DHT. When you get to the 600 milligram dose, they're about the same. Actually the, yeah, they're almost exactly the same. Um, now, free DHT, free, keep in mind, 25 milligram dose, the younger men have far higher free DHT levels. At 50 milligrams, the younger men have higher free DHT levels. At 125 milligrams per week, the young men have higher free DHT levels. At 300 milligrams a week, they have almost equivalent free DHT levels. And at 600 milligrams per week, the younger men have significantly higher free DHT levels. So at almost every single dosage, the young men have more free DHT for the same dose of testosterone or equal at like the very worst. Now, total E2 to T uh, ratio here. Um, actually the ratios are kind of, I'm not gonna go into them specifically, but the point here is basically when you get older, you get higher SHBG levels, significantly more. And this is why proportionally your bioavailable testosterone decreases far at a far greater rate than your total does. So it's almost like a vicious circle. As you get older and you get fatter and your SHBG goes up, you also increase the amount of aromatase activity in your body. The more fat you are, the more aromatase activity you have, which in turn means more estrogen in your body. And when you have more estrogen in your body, that means you reach your threshold amount of estrogen much quicker that then tells your HPTA, the negative feedback loop, that you have enough estrogen and you don't need to produce more tests. So the reason why aromatase inhibitors and stuff increase testosterone is because they're blocking the amount, the aromatase from producing the estrogen. When you have less estrogen in the body, it signals to your brain, we need to produce more testosterone because we don't have enough estrogen. Not that there's not enough testosterone, it's that we need to produce more testosterone to create enough estrogen to hit that threshold physiologic amount. And then we shut off production. People are increasing their SHBG levels. They're getting fatter. They're increasing aromatase expression. They're increasing their estrogen levels proportionally. As you saw in the graph here, we have the older men gaining, having significantly higher estrogen production than the young men. So in turn, what does that do? Think about it, right? So the SHBG goes up in concurrence with the estrogen going up. In addition, what's it's going to tell your brain? You now have a certain, you have way higher estrogen than the younger man. So you hit that physiologic limit that sends negative feedback to you saying, don't produce more tests. We have enough estrogen. We don't need more testosterone to produce more estrogen because we have enough tests. We have enough estrogen, which they do, but they don't have enough testosterone proportionally. So that's where you start to get the hypogonadal symptoms. You start to have um, decreasing amounts of testosterone and DHT. And when you look at this proportionally, even for the exact same dose of testosterone controlled, everyone's on the exact same amount here. The only difference is their age and likely body composition and hepatic metabolism, sex hormones and stuff. The young men are responding more favorably in a, not only by producing less estrogen, but they're going to have lower SHBG levels and they're gonna have higher free DHT as a result because typically DHT binds with the highest affinity for sex hormone binding globulin. So when you get older, do you produce more DHT? No, you produce way less because you're producing less testosterone. And especially with the negative feedback with having increased estrogen, you have even less testosterone production, which consequently is going to be less 5-alpha reduction into DHT, and you have higher SHBG, so even with that lower amount of DHT that you have as an older man, more of it's getting bound up by SHBG. It's not freely flowing around to cause hair loss. So no, you don't <laughs> proportionally start to produce more DHT as you get older. So just a recap of exactly what's happening here. So higher SHBG levels as you get older. So keep in mind, binding affinity for DHT relative to T relative to estrogen. So as you get older, you have more SHBG and you're also getting fatter, you have more aromatase expression, that is going to bind up more of the DHT. So 
despite the fact that the total VHT is almost equivalent. Like, first of all, because of negative feedback, you're already producing less test than a younger man. We already know that. But even, even if you had exactly the same levels and they were controlled 100% and everyone was getting the exact same dose of injectable testosterone, the older men, they have almost the exact same total DHT production, but their estrogen is way higher, their SHBG is way higher, and their total DHT is getting bound up way more. So proportionally, they actually have less DHT as they get older relative to the other sex hormones. So no, you do not produce more DHT as you get older, nor does your proportional change in sex hormones go more in favor of DHT to make up the difference. In fact, it gets more in favor of estrogen dominance than anything. So what is the reason you go bald as you get older, but in young age with peak testosterone and free testosterone and free DHT levels, you don't go bald seemingly. It's not that, you, it's not that you're balding in old age and all of a sudden you're balding. Rather, it's the fact that, first of all, as you get older, you have to keep in mind that hair follicles, they're, sent, they're just organs at the end of the day. Your organs don't, aren't in immaculate you know, shape. As you get older, everything ages in terms of your heart starts to weaken. You start to have impaired hepatic clearance of sex hormones. You start to have impaired liver function. You start to have impaired, lots of physiologic processes are not working the same as they did when you were a teenager. And your hair follicles are also organs, which aren't going to be as healthy as they were as a very young man. On top of that, the accumulative miniaturization of hair follicles it's accumulative and you have a hundred thousand roughly, you know, certain ethnicities have more, certain have less, but most have, you know, around a hundred, 110,000 hair follicles or whatever it is. If you just pull a hair out of your head, do you notice visually that your hair is any different? No. If you pull out a hundred hairs out of your head, does it visually look any different to you? No. Even if you pull out a thousand hairs out of your head, does it visually look that much different? Maybe not even. But once you start to get to the point where you've permanently lost, well, permanently, I've talked about is hair loss really permanent at the end of the day, but once you've had miniaturization of like 20, 30% plus of the hairs on your head and you've like, you know, had severe miniaturization of like 20,000 plus hair follicles and now all of a sudden you're seeing it, is it that you are suddenly losing your hair and now you're visually seeing every single hair fallout? Or is it that, up to this point, you've just been slowly losing it and now you're just noticing it visually because it's built up and accumulated to this 25,000 hairs off of your head. Like, I think the answer is obvious. And I might, you know, from what I can tell, guys aren't immune to hair loss when they're younger. Sure, functions in the body work better. Your sex hormone, you know, balance is better. The way you, you know, facilitate functions in the body endogenously and have hormone balancing and whatnot, everything is better in terms of how everything's functioning. But at the end of the day, you still have androgens miniaturizing your hair follicles from day one, right? After you hit puberty, you start to undergo the process of miniaturization and the rate at which it happens is going to depend largely on density of androgen receptors and aromatase enzyme activity. And this is you know, part of the reason why there's a big difference in females to males and such and such and whatnot. The actual amount of hormones you produce and then on top of that, you know, there's actual receptor expression, transcription of effects and gene expression and whatnot, which is kind of irrelevant to this video. The point is, is that right when you hit puberty, this process starts to, starts rolling and how fast you get there is dependent on all those factors I just mentioned, but it's happening. So by the time you notice it visually, it's not that all of a sudden when you were 35, you just suddenly started losing hair. It's that up to this point from age, you know, 16 to 35, you've been slowly losing you know, 1,000 hairs off your head every single year. And now you're just to a point where you can visually see it cosmetically because it's progressed to a point that now there's so much diffuse thinning or recession because so many hairs have been, you know, permanently lost that you're visually seeing at this point. The, it's an accumulative effect. It's not like you just have some switch. There are some, you know, some cases in which you might, you know, like epigenetic triggers and stuff might play some role. But to be honest, from what I can tell, like the evidence that I've seen to date, the majority of the time, it's that it's been somebody who has, you know, slowly built up to this point or fast, depending on, you know, all the factors I mentioned, but they're just visually seeing it and now noticing it rather than 
Like before you could have pulled, you know, 500 hairs out of your head. You wouldn't have seen a difference visually, but now you're to the point where you've had so many thousands of hairs being miniaturized over the years. And now you're visually seeing the cosmetic representation of those 10 to 20 years of miniaturization. So that is the difference in my opinion. Like it's the fact is when you get into older age and you look at men versus women, it's like, if you go out to a restaurant, look around, there's men and there's women. There's the men, how many of them in old age have their hair? Not a whole lot have good hairlines. Now let's look at the women in old age, the ones who are, you know, ideally you would probably look at actually, maybe it's better to look at middle age because women in menopause, when they crash their hormones, it's not necessarily conducive to keeping healthy hair either. But women prior to hitting menopause, or even if they're after menopause and they're doing proper HRT, um, who has the hair when you look around the room? It's the guys who are all severely thinning and receding and the women all have tons of hair on their head still. What's the difference between the two? It's the amount of androgens in the body relative to estrogen. And that's it. That's at the end of the day, that's what it is. So no, the older men aren't just all of a sudden disproportionately like picking up their DHT production and like destroying their hair. It's been happening for years. And actually it's probably happening less so in old age, but there are physiologic functions impeded by simply being older and having less, you know, functional organs. But on top of that, they've been experiencing hair loss for like 40 plus years. And it's just, you know, visually being represented in a Norwood six, you know, now. So anyways, take from that what you will, but that's my stance on it. I get asked this all the time. And a lot of people haven't seen my video on, you won't notice hair loss till you've lost uh, 50% of it was the title. Realistically, it's more like 20 to 30, but anyways, um, that is my stance on it. So thank you guys for watching. Please like subscribe, check out my blog, moreplates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. Anything I'm associated with in the, in the video description helps support the channel in case you want to um, check that stuff out. If I have anything hair loss related, it will be in there as well. In addition, sign up to the mailing list if you want to get sent the articles as soon as they go live. You're only going to get emailed these articles that I publish um, if you're on this mailing list and they have you know far more elaborate deep dives into hair loss, pharmacology, longevity, health, you know, bodybuilding, tons of stuff that's relevant at the end of the day to anything that you might be interested in. To be honest, if you're on this channel, you're probably interested in the shit that I send out. So um, hair loss prevention, um, cutting edge research, literally putting chemicals on my own head and injecting myself with random stuff. If you're interested in any of that and want to see my deep dives into the research as well as delve into it further for your own personal, you know, research and whatnot. I hyperlink all the studies I reference. All the research is broken down into concise subsections with table of contents and it's way more palatable than my videos. And uh, yeah, a lot of incentive to sign up for that. So check that out. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.